Hi everyone, today I'm going to be working on Box Theater and today I'll be working on Sweet Dreams Among Blooms which is this one right here. Once we take a look inside, we're going to find a tin box, instruction manuals, all the parts and you're going to see this uh, kind of basswood piece and you put it together like this to create the stand that the tin box is going to be sitting on. So once the model is all complete, you're going to put it on the stand just like so. And right now you're just seeing an empty tin box, but we'll be filling that in with the model very soon. Now let's take up the instructional manual. It actually shows you step-by-step -step pictures of how to put it together. And at the very end of the manual, you're going to have a few sheets. I believe it's a two, uh, three sheets that actually has a paper template that you will be cutting out um, each individual piece to be able to uh, cover a lot of the wood parts or some of the parts that you'll be putting on as a texture. So I like ripping out the pages ahead of time and then um, I use an X-Acto knife or sometimes a scissor depending on the piece and uh, if it's a straight edge I try to use a ruler with the X-Acto knife to get a kind of clean cut and um, as you can see here I'm just kind of going back and forth between the curvature and like a, using a straight ruler to get the straight piece. And then I use Mod Podge to get a very thin layer of glue. And sometimes I'll be using tacky glue that's instead of a squeeze bottle. And it really depends on the part that you're um, attaching on. But in this case, since it's a larger surfer area, I thought it'd be easier to actually use a paintbrush with the Mod Podge to just kind of get a very, very thin layer that I can actually have evenly without any clumps of glue. Occasionally, I'll be using Instaset and Instacure. And Instacure is the actual glue, while Instaset is a spray bottle um, that you can use to actually have the glue harden instantaneously. And I use this a lot for maybe the harder wood pieces that I know that I need to dry really quickly because I don't want to have to hold it in place so until it dries. These kind of wedge pieces, the bracing pieces that go behind the front plate is, will actually be used to kind of hold the pedestal up um, afterwards. Um, it is a little bit easier to probably place it in before you put the front plate in, but I like doing it afterwards just so that I know I can just squeeze it in and kind of hold it in place using the front place as kind of a, a, a clamp. One thing that's not shown in this video that I had to do was because the front plates were actually not squeezed all the way to the edge by accident. Uh, one of the kind of uh, parts that's sticking out of this middle piece uh, was actually a little bit too long. So I actually ended up using a knife to cut off a little bit of the end piece just so that I can fit it in between the two front plates. So there's going to be this one uh, paper template piece that you need to actually glue onto the cardboard before cutting it out so that it's actually thickened and a little bit stiffened. And once you have glued the piece on, you can start cutting out each individual piece with an X-Acto knife. For the circle pieces on this cardboard, I found it easier to just use a scissor and just kind of cut around. So there will be a paper template that shows green parts here like this. And it's actually not being going to be used as the actual uh, paper texture as much as you're going to put on the back set of the grass uh, sheet and so that you can use that as a cutting template so that you know exactly which piece or exactly the shape of the piece that you need to cut out for each grass piece. So a little tip for these pieces that you're going to be gluing onto the wood pieces is actually to not cut right along the edges of the border um, just because, you know, sometimes the, the part might be a little bit bigger than what you're cutting. So it might actually be easier to cut, give a little bit of white space around the border. And then once you glue it on to the, the wood piece, you can actually use the X-Acto knife to kind of cut out the the pieces that are actually sticking out. So then you have a very, very clean edge where the uh, paper template is going to be right up against the edge of the wood piece. Now this part here is actually optional, but what I like doing is using X-Acto knife and scoring the surface very slightly for any of the paper pieces that I need to actually fold. And what that does is that it actually ends up having a cleaner edge and also makes it a lot easier to fold. 
for the most part for this model, I will actually be using tacky glue that I like putting into this little squeeze bottle from another model kit that I had before. And uh, the reason for that is because the tacky bottle or tacky glue bottle is actually a little bit harder to squeeze kind of uh, accurately. So I like using the squeeze bottle so that I can kind of control the glue amount and exactly where it goes because I have a little bit better control using the squeeze bottle. So for the stair piece, you want to be cognizant of the fact that the second floor uh, plate will actually have to sit on the stair a little bit. So you actually don't want to have it too far away uh, from the edge because you want that edge piece to kind of sit on the stair. For the strip, I actually like just squeezing it in and then using the exacto knife to kind of press up against the, the kind of valley of this kind of opening. And so that I can kind of get a very tight squeeze in with the strip because trying to use that with a tweezer on my hand is actually a little bit too thick that using the back of the exacto knife, I can get it very close to the, the wood surface. If you look at the paper template for the roof uh, surface, um, you're going to find out that the um, the width of the front piece is actually just the right amount for the paper template and that the side pieces are actually a little bit longer than the wedge piece itself. And the reason for that is that the wedge piece actually goes behind the front wood portion of the wood. So when you're gluing it together, make sure that you have the wedge piece or actually the side of the roof be behind the actual front of the roof. For this kind of top rear roof you actually want to fold it in half before you cut out the hole in the middle and the reason for that is so that you can just do one uh, set of cuts to make sure that the front and the back hole actually aligns properly For the curtain for the window, we're going to be taking the strip of lace and kind of make it into a quarter cuts, but don't cut it all the way because we still need the top side to be attached. Once we glue the top of the lace onto the window, we'll be actually folding uh, the curtains um, onto each other to kind of make it look like some window curtains. Since I wanted the railings to be kind of attached on quickly, I ended up using Instacure or you can use super glue just so that I can actually uh, place the railing on top and then use the Instaset to kind of cure it in place really quickly instead of waiting for the tacky glue to dry where the railings can actually be kind of uh, slanted or kind of not in the right position by the time it dries. So with the twine that we're going to be adding onto the cylinder shapes, the cylinder shape actually has a little bit of a kind of a wedge piece taken out of it. So you want to start from one side of the wedge opening to the other side uh, around the curvature for the twine. The window pieces that will be going onto the tower is actually really small, so it's actually really hard to cut. So this was the hardest cut I had to do on this model. Um, but my advice would actually be, because what I did was actually segmented each uh, window piece uh, from the actual overall paper template and then cut out in individually. But what would actually be easier is to just keep all of them on one sheet and just cut it out one by one just so that you have a lot more gripping surface with your fingers to be able to hold down while you're cutting it with your exacto knife. Thank you. 
the wedge opening of the tower pieces should fit right at this corner and it'll actually hide that kind of unfinished surface at the corner. Don't worry too much about the tower or any of the pieces not looking very great um, when you're gluing it together because at the end of the day we'll be actually covering with a lot of foliage and berries and stuff like that so you can actually hide a lot of the mess that you might have created while cutting these pieces. For the side of the dormer walls, um, you're going to have three sides because it's a triangle shape. So the longest side of the triangle should be actually placed onto the sloped roof. And once you have the dormer walls on, you're going to use the triangle uh, roof piece to actually just fold over to hold it in place. And then you have your dormer roof. For the pillow, uh, you're actually going to be kind of rolling up this sheet of fabric into like a burrito and then you're going to close it off and then you're going to cut it into the pieces that you need. But what I actually like doing is actually gluing the first edge before I fold it down and then as I'm done rolling, I'll actually glue the other edge um, onto the burrito shape itself and this actually makes sure that it, cut, it holds in place as I'm cutting the pieces off. Another thing that's not shown on this video, but what I like doing for a lot of these kind of fabric pieces that actually kind of frays at the edges a lot, I actually like using super glue and kind of just using the glue at the edges so that it actually hardens and then I can just kind of trim it off with my scissor. And what actually that does is it actually prevents the fraying and it actually does harden the fabric a little bit so that once it dries up, it can kind of just retain its shape instead of the fabric trying to kind of unfold itself. For the actual cushion for the couch, it's going to be the exact same step as the pillows, but instead this is actually going to be for the cushion and we're going to be cutting into smaller segments. The chandelier is actually one of the really hard parts of this model and it has to do with the fact that you have these S-shaped curves that you need to make with the uh, wires and then you're going to be using the S-shaped curve to actually embed in between each uh, bead of this kind of star-shaped bead and once that is in place um, you're going to be actually attaching the individual small beads on top of each S-curve to kind of create the chandelier element but once that's all in place in the middle you're going to kind of put this kind of crown piece and it looks like i think it was from a jewelry set kind of button uh piece that you're going to be putting in and then you're going to have a five bead piece string that you're going to be attaching to the top of it to kind of create your chandelier same kind of star shaped copper piece that we used earlier we're going to be using that as a bowl for our fruits that we're going to be going on it and for the fruit we're going to be cutting slices of this eraser and then cutting it into wedges to create each individual fruit wedge Again, lightly scoring the piece of paper actually helps a lot to fold this piece because there's a lot of folds that need to happen at the same time. So pre-scoring it actually allowed me to uh, guide the paper as I'm folding it down on each other using a tweezer. Uh, so if if you're comfortable using an X-Acto knife and not trying to cut through the paper, I would highly suggest actually scoring the paper first.
with the same copper kind of plate piece that we used earlier, we're going to be cutting this uh, wedge piece that looks more like a fan that we're going to be using kind of as embellishment on the top of the archway. For a lot of the furniture and the decorations, you can actually decorate however you feel like. Um, I just kind of followed the manual just because I, I did look, I did like how it looks, and I thought it would be easier for people to follow if I just kind of did it according to what the manual shows. But you can actually place it however you feel like. Make sure to put this basket inside this little broom before you add on the doors afterwards. I didn't show this part in the video, but how I got that kind of twisty shape uh, cane piece was actually I got the white wire and then I twisted it as much as I can uh, with all the strings that I had until it became a very, very tight kind of twist uh, piece. Then I used the wire snipper to kind of cut the pieces that I need. So the uh, set actually comes with this kind of white sheet of paper that you're going to be using to kind of uh, stick on these kind of uh, wires to the back side of the mansion and you will actually be using this to kind of insulate uh, the uh, pieces of wire that you will be connecting to each other. There is one thing I did want to talk about which is you're going to see later on in the video and I will comment on this in the, in the uh, subtitles but uh, when I was using the Instacure to actually uh, glue it onto the back of this kind of tin box the problem was that I, I believe that the um, the Insta cure is actually still conductive so what ended up happening was there's a cross wire that the lights will still randomly turn on even though the power switch was off so i actually suggest not using the actual um uh insecure or super glue but maybe just use tacky glue or you know maybe even just use a little bit of the white tape to just kind of uh tape it on and you can try covering with a foliage instead When you're connecting the wires together to the battery piece, just uh, there are going to be two colors, a white and a purple color. So you just get the two white wires and just kind of um, you tie it together in parallel along and then the purple ones, you tie the two purple uh, wires together in parallel. And then that's all you need to do and you just kind of wrap the end with the white stickers so that it's actually not exposed. Before we put on the platform, make sure that the wire that's sticking out is at the back left corner of the set because there's going to be a little uh, indentation on the platform where the wire is supposed to come through. And once you put the uh, platform on, you can actually tug on the wire from the battery side so that you actually are um, making the wire go in as you're putting on this mansion piece so that you're not actually exposing more wire than you need to. Make sure that the door is slightly ajar so that you can actually see into the room because you actually spend a lot of time working on that basket with the grape piece in it. So it would be nice to kind of be able to see inside the mansion and see the grape. This is kind of hard to see in the video just because the piece is so small. But what you're doing is you're getting that orange uh, eraser and you're gonna get the two blue strips of paper and you're gonna actually wrap it around um, perpendicular to each other. And then you're gonna get the next uh, blue strip and you're gonna kind of just fold it in half. Um, and then you're gonna actually gonna pinch in the middle to kind of create a ribbon piece. It's kind of hard to see, but what I'm doing right now was I was actually folding that kind of strip of paper uh, with all the different images. Um, so I'm folding it on itself until it creates kind of like the pages for the book. And then I used the other piece that was supposed to be the cover of the book and I glue on the kind of the pages of the book onto the cover. So this kind of circle template will go on the back side of the bigger paper template and on the other side of the paper template is actually the piece of fabric that's already glued onto it. And then starting with one corner, we're going to start folding it in until the, the pieces of fabrics are all folded down, which will create kind of the tablecloth and the sides of the tablecloth uh, for our table. So 
So in this case, we're actually going to be folding the fabric around the smallest circle and then we're going to glue it to the bottom side of the circle so it's kind of flat. And then we're going to wedge that piece into kind of like this button uh, opening hole and then we're going to glue it in and that will create the cushion for our seats. There will be two small white beads that will be actually used as our teacup onto this kind of piece of fabric that will be our tablecloth. From the grass template, you will have two kind of like a triangle shaped piece that you're going to be rolling into like a cone shape and that will become our pine trees. The kind of tree piece that was added onto this bottle, what you're going to be doing is cutting off each branch piece to smaller pieces and you're going to take a few of those branches and just really cut them into small like leaf or foliage pieces and we're going to be gluing all these pieces onto the model eventually. For the stones, I actually did a layer of super glue and then I added on all the stones and then what I did was actually put in another layer of super glue on top and then used the Instacure to kind of just kind of glue it in place and the one property of the insecure sometimes is that um, the actual uh, rocks with the institute set on it will actually make it kind of shiny so it looks kind of like more of a wet cobblestone look so we're just going to be adding all the kind of tree pieces on to like the borders and wherever we feel like there's kind of a kind of a dead zone or like an open area you know we want to kind of fill this up with as much foliage and entourage elements to kind of make it look very uh, quaint and I have to say honestly uh, this part of the model is the very last part but it is very time consuming because you were actually adding on individual foliage pieces the vines the berries the petals of the flowers um, you know so it is a painstaking portion but it, this is kind of where the model really starts to shine is that you're filling up all the gaps of the detail where it's kind of bare in, in, in the sense of amount of detail and with all these berries and like these very colorful colorful like pastel colors that you're adding on it really does make the model the more you add on and you can actually do it however you feel like um, I actually just kind of looked at it of where I thought a color was kind of missing or if I wanted more berries and just try to really balance out the colors and uh, the amount of foliage around the whole model. So I actually used a lot of the foliage and some of the rock pieces to kind of cover the side of the grass piece platform that was on top of the our big platform and just because I did not want to really see the, the edge of the wood like that because I wanted to kind of hide that as much as possible. And after that, it's really just the same thing again and again until I'm kind of happy with what I have. So I kind of leave this video at this point and you can kind of watch the rest of the video and just kind of enjoy adding, you know, these details being added. Um, but I'll just have the music on the background and you can just kind of enjoy the rest of the video. I really do enjoy making these box theater models. Um, 
you know and i know it looks very time consuming but from start to finish it takes me usually about eight straight hours to work on it so usually during a weekend i can finish one of these box models in a day um so just you know if you're wondering how long will it take and how you know like how intricate is, is this just think of it about an eight to ten hour work that you'll be putting into this model to have this kind of final product that you see here And so thank you for watching and if you enjoyed watching this video please hit that like button or leave a comment below um and i'll try to make more of these videos as i go along i still have a bunch of these box eaters to make so you know hit that subscribe button and see you know if you'll see a video pop up very soon